chakras. The amethyst has fallen off my meridian. Hiya, I'm Dom. And I'm Misha. And I have a chronic illness. Me too. So welcome to Anything Short of a Coffee Enema. A podcast on which we'll discuss the things we do or have done to function. And set each other challenges or tasks every time. We are prepared to go to any lengths to achieve reasonable health. Short of a macchiato, up your jacksy. Hello, dearest of dear listeners. I hope you'll permit me a quick moment before the podcast begins to make a grovelling apology. It's been two months since the last upload, not at all the nice regular run of fortnightly episodes promised. I'd love nothing more than to blame this on Dom somehow, but the simple fact is that it's entirely my fault. My sincerest apologies and most fervent hopes that I won't cause another unplanned gap from this point forward. Anyone who's been angered by our absence might enjoy hearing that a big part of my inability to edit and upload episodes in a timely fashion was that I've been doing a statistics unit at university that has caused me profound and prolonged suffering. I last did any sort of mathematics when I was a beardless slip of a 17-year-old in the last century, and even then I did general math B, a subject in which the lower fong or forms of pond life often achieve excellent marks. Though I now have two more grey hairs in my beard, the subject is nearly done, and as mentioned, I hope that I'll get back to regular releases of this podcast, which means a great deal to me. Sorry all over again, and thanks. Today, I am going to report on a fortnight's interaction with activated charcoal. I am going to report on a fortnight's use of acupressure mat, which was actually good fun. Mm. I'm going to review a pillow. Yay for pillows. <laughs> <laughs> the way he looked at me then was like it was going to be groundbreaking. Dom, pillow! Dom is pillow underbound. review! Well, look, it's a, it's a pretty special pillow. I mean, it would have to be, Misha. Mm-hmm. It would have to be. And I'm going to actually review a podcast, but it, I'm going to review it in a meditation-y kind of Ooh. aspect. Ooh. I've got a reason as to why I'm reviewing it on this, because it actually has nothing to do with health or wellness. Cool. Can't it's wait. So, Dom, as revenge for being forced to do a fortnight of stabbing myself in the leg... A bit of stabbage is never bad. I inflicted upon you a device known as an implicator. Or most commonly known as a Shakti mat, I think is how you say it. That's the main brand that I could find. Otherwise known, the generic name for it is an acupressure mat or Mm -hmm. a modern day bed of nails. So, the one that I have here is not the Shakti one's because a lot of them come slightly padded, or you can get the foam ones that are for your neck yep. and stuff as well. Um, this is a, I'm going to say, a, a very cheap generic tea towel covered, <laughs> with, <laughs> covered with spiky discs of yeah, pain. Yeah, it's got a certain calico flavour to it. Yeah, no, this, sure. is, this is, a, if you put different scenes from a country village on it, this is what they sell in that one gift shop. That's exactly what that material is. It's even the right size for a tea towel. Mm. So they just went off some... You know, Chinese website went, oh, we'll get four bazillion of those. That's about the right size. Um, so I was using this every night generally. Mm-hmm. I sometimes use it during the day, but mostly during the night. So I'd put it down on my bed. It's recommended that you use a top for the, and you lie on it, obviously. Mm. You put your body on top of it. Otherwise, how, how is it going to work for you, Misha? How? It's recommended that you put a top on for the first couple of times, but then you're not meant to actually have anything between your skin and it. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed it, actually. Yeah. So the f- first couple of seconds are meant to be quite painful, but they were just kind of nice bits of spikiness, and I yeah. actually quite enjoyed that. And then after about 15, 20 minutes is when it's meant to do its joy for mm. you, and basically I think it's meant to cure you of anything and everything that you could possibly have ever <laughs> caught in your entire existence. They, those are the claims. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think kidney disease and everything. Yep. I don't think... Look, I'm not cured. No. I didn't wake up in the morning going, I'm cured! I just... But I did enjoy it. I actually fell asleep quite a few times. Yeah, on it. yeah, yeah. 
Yep. And then I'd go to turn over because I'd line it on my back and then I'd go to turn over in my sleeping bed. Oh, fuck, that one hurt right on the boob or whatever. I did often would, like, I'd take it out and then just kind of throw it next to my bed. And a couple of times in the middle of the night, I would get up to go to the toilet and land right on it and just be like, oh. you know when you stand on Lego and you yeah. don't realise you're about to stand on Lego? It's yeah. that same sort of pain and betrayal all at oh, once no. in the middle of the night. Oh, no. So there was a couple of times and I was like, holy bad Jesus. But other than that. It was rather a good experience. I, I did also do something which is really, really unappealing, which is stand on it with your bare feet. Oh, that's not super comfy. Yeah, I wouldn't I did, have thought so. I did start with socks as you're meant to and sitting yeah. down with just feet on it, but then I was like, that's nothing. So then I stood on it with my feet and was I was a bit of a girl about it. I was like... Look, I'm saying it was high Listened. pitched, and yeah, there was yeah. lots of there was Oof. lots of holy fuck that <laughs> really loudly. I'll bet. Um, it is actually meant to be quite helpful if you're standing on your feet all day to do that when you're sitting down with bare feet when uh -huh. you get home. Yeah. And I did that once or twice, and yes, look, it was nice. I don't know if it was helpful. Mm. Didn't cure my souls, but yeah. it was nice. It did the job. I think the job is just increasing circulation. To be honest, I did do some research on these. And what research there is is fairly scant. There's a lot of research on um, acupuncture, but not as much yeah. on acupressure mats. So the research really that came out is that it can cause... So there's some papers that looked at nausea yeah. and um, it doesn't help nausea. In fact, it can cause nausea. Mm. But And this was mostly in a study with pregnant women, I think. Yeah. Um, but acupuncture in the same study helped women with nausea. Yeah. With chronic pain, because you get a mild, with that sort of short, sharp, acute pain, you do get the body releases, not only does it help circulation, but it does release a small amount of serotonin. Yep. So it's claimed to help anxiety, it's claimed to help stress, it's claimed to help pretty much everything mm. on a mood level, and it will help a tiny bit because of the serotonin, but it won't necessarily, you know, so there was a study where they looked at people using something like this the night before surgery or something. And mm. it helped a bit then because yeah. it gave them a bit of serotonin which helped them relax their muscles along with all the circulation and everything which helped them sleep and helped relieve their anxiety. But if you have a generalised anxiety disorder, I don't think a Shakti <laughs> mat is going to cure you. <laughs> no, You're not going to be able to go, oh, I don't need any of that medication. And, and screw psychologists. None of this is important to me anymore. I have my bed of nails <laughs> to cling to in times of need. Um, yeah, I think mostly it's it's very momentary relief. They have actually, there's one study that was really interesting where they looked at chronic headaches and they somebody they had a control group and then they had a placebo and then they had a sham group as well where they were using um, these every night yeah. on their neck and area and they had huge increases, like huge decreases in the people that use this in their chronic headaches mm. compared to the control groups and stuff that didn't. Yeah. So that is interesting. I think it just basically it just gives a lot of circulation to areas that can be hard to give circulation to, I think. Yeah. It can be quite comfortable after a little while. There's a, there's a kind of folk theory about them that I have heard, which is that for people who suffer from chronic pain, which does not have a direct like physical damage cause, so yep. there's something, some misfiring nerve yeah. signal, essentially, that it can be helpful in terms of a kind of resetting of sensations of pain, or at least I've heard that. So people talk about, for example, really useful for sciatica and... I mean, I did you know, sort of do some strange acrobatics sort of, because I mostly get my nerve pain. I get it in my legs, but I mostly get it in my shins, yeah. really, is where it really kind of goes up from my middle of my foot all the way up my shins, kind of almost to my mid thigh area. And because it's on the front, that was hard to work that around. Mm. I did end up getting that on there. And I've got to say, it didn't really help yeah, yeah. that much. That was a weird noise and I'm sorry about that. My stomach just made weird noises. Um, it is, but that also could be because the position wasn't very relaxing. Like I was in no. that position and I was listening to a podcast and I was okay for like, 25, 30 minutes, and then I was like, this just feels like I'm lying in a weird position for yeah. half an hour for no good purpose, kind of by the end. It wasn't hurting anymore, mm. but it certainly wasn't reducing pain 
any more either. Yeah. So what I ended up doing is just having a really hot bath with some magnesium salts. Not that that cures the pain. No. But I mean, heat kind of makes all pain go yep. a little bit dull. Yeah, so yeah, that yeah, was yeah. kind of what I did. Yeah, lowers the volume on it, for yeah. sure. My, my memory of that, because it is my... It's yes. my mat, which I lent you. Um, my memory is of it being somewhere in the neighbourhood of about $60, $65, I think. Something Ooh, like that. that's expensive for a tea towel. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, because he's cornered the market on these things, this Russian or Ukrainian gentleman. Well, except for Shark Tea and all the other brands. All the, as the we like to call them in of other Russia, brands. the rip-off merchants and... <laughs> when, I went, very... when I went Googling research, yeah. all I could find for ages was just patents of very minute changes yeah. to exactly the same product. There's basically. a gigantic war going on between yep. the, the creators of these things. I did find it most useful for when I lay it from like the mid of my head all the way down to my hips and made sure yep. there was a pillow under my knee so that my, I was putting weight on yeah. the right parts of my back and everything. And then particularly around my neck and my... Um, top of my shoulders where it can be hard to get that sort of pressure onto it was quite nice yeah and i think those are the nights that i tend to fall asleep yeah yeah yeah, which, yeah. no I've, and I've... i take ages to fall so i find it very hard to fall asleep so that was actually quite nice mm. yeah that's yep. definitely been my experience with it i had one once when i fell asleep on it i woke up i don't know how much longer but i did actually have pretty substantial bruising the next day in the kind of speckled Little... patterns i mean i don't know if i had bruising <coughs> But I gotta say, I didn't really check mm. the kids. Because why? Why? Yeah. It's it's winter at the moment, so I mean, I did do it without clothes on. But I gotta be honest, most nights I had a top on, a long mm. sleeve top on, because I don't put heating on. Because yeah, yeah, I can't justify it when I can wear more clothes. Mm. Um, but I did do it a couple of nights without a top. It wasn't that much different, unless you were wearing a super thick top. I didn't find the difference to be ma- huge. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think it'd be that much. No. And the only time for me, the only time when it gets substantially uncomfortable is kind of like when you mentioned, like if you move suddenly or unexpectedly mm. when you're not thinking about it, it can be quite stabby, um, or if you don't have it sort of put out quite flat and it sort of moves around and scrapes. I was going to say when skin, sometimes you're cool. lying down because if you put <coughs> it in bed and then. Yeah, I put all the bed clothes back and then I kind of sit in front of where it was and then I yep. kind of peel myself backwards. It was a yeah, bit yeah. of a process getting down onto it yep. so I got the right alignment. Mm-hmm. But then sometimes I wouldn't get the alignment right or as I was going down because the bed dips a little bit or whatever, it would move and then to put more weight on like one hip to move the mat underneath. Yes. That was a little bit tingly, I've got to say. A spiky side. Yeah. yeah. But actually, look, <coughs> I do often wake up with muscle or a bit of joint pain in my hips and my legs Mm. because I I sleep a lot on my side and I don't think that happened as much. Yeah. Mm. It didn't cure anything. No. Still have a chronic illness. It didn't help my digestion. There are claims that it helps digestion. I couldn't find any actual evidence or anything that it did. It it did not touch the digestion. I got to say (laughs) we were up front about that. But it was... Yeah, it was, look, it was quite pleasant. Yeah, I think, I mean... I'd do it again. In this area, when someone comes up with something that's even vaguely kind of new and when they have a couple of people who really swear by it and they get a couple of testimonials, Mm -hmm. there's a kind of, you know, I don't want to say all chiropractors are like this, obviously all alternative (laughs) therapy people are not like this, obviously. but, But there are some who do make just... Absurd, outrageous just claims. crazy claims. There's about also what they can the do. fact that you know, if you want something to work hard enough because you're desperate, sometimes you just imagine it does work if it uh-huh. doesn't, and yeah, that yeah. can certainly be. But I actually quite enjoyed it. It certainly has... didn't add to my pain. If anything, it took a little bit away from yeah. what chronic pain I do have. There is some crap online that it, the reason it works is because it follows meridians. I I think the reason it works is because it provides a really nice low level amount of circulation boost to a certain area and a yep. low level drip of serotonin. I think that yeah, yeah. that is the only reason it does work, but it mm-hmm. does to a small extent work. It's it's a weapon in the arsenal that you can certainly put in there. Yeah. yeah. And there are lots and lots and lots of different ones, like obviously different sizes kind of duh. Um, colours. That's colors, important, for obviously. For sure. The same Russian company actually makes one for knees and mm. for other joints. I've seen other which, ones like that. Um, the, like sp- the spiky like things. Ones, yeah. yeah, there's the strap on ones, but there's also a spiky one that comes on like an inflatable sort of balloon, like which a... you pump up. 
like a, a blood pressure kind of thing. Yankee. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, and as you inflate it more and more, obviously the spikes are going to press in. Yeah, that's quite clever. Harder and harder. So that's that's another one. There's Very... ones on foam rollers, so you can really get at the neck or get behind the knee Ooh. or whatever as well. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, that, that sounds. That like glint my... in your eye is bad. <laughs> that sounds like my kind of thing. <laughs> foam rollers with spikes on. Yeah. Them, we're talking. There's those sort of ones as well. Mm. So there's, you know. Any any little muscle circulation area need that you've got, I think the acupressure mat to market has you covered. Yeah. And it, chalk it up to another one of those things that's not as painful as you think it's going to be. I didn't think it was going to be that painful. Yeah, but you're... Oh, again. And it, it really isn't that... Look, I did say to Misha... You, you have different <laughs> concepts of pain to the rest of the population. You've got to get it through your head. It... It did surprise the hell out of my cat when he was all excited that we were going to bed one night and I'd already laid it out, was going to the toilet, was about to turn off the light and head to bed. And he was running around excited and ran over and let out a bit of a squeal, just oh, in surprise. Man. I don't think he was in pain, although he probably acted like he was in pain because it got him more attention, let's mm -hmm. be real. But he, as he was running across the bed in joy, the joy was quickly diminished. <laughs> Keep away from pets. You got me, Dom. I know. This is I'm the really second, excited about this. This is the second time in a row that you've basically picked something from the hyper-fashionable column and said, let's yes. make Misha do this. Yes. And uh, look, I'm going to be entirely upfront. I mostly want to hear about your black poop. Yeah. You're going to be disappointed. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, you're going to be a little bit disappointed. So you challenged me to use activated charcoal as a kind of... Ingest activated charcoal. Yeah, what would you call it? It's not exactly what you call a dietary supplement. It's kind of like, in theory, it's supposed to be a detox tool. Yeah, it's basically. meant to be part of you, like a detox or whatever. Yeah, yeah. and the reason, the reason for that is... So activated charcoal is a really fancy way of talking about something that's been burnt down to it, like carbon, and then it's exposed to steam. Yes. And in the case of charcoal... What this seems to do is make it like incredibly porous, especially on its sort of surface mm -hmm. areas. So it's unbelievably absorbent. Yep. And unbelievably absorbent. But it of, also still lets things through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of tiny, tiny, tiny little particles. Yeah. Um, so that's the kind of theory. So anyone who's been unlucky enough to have their stomach pumped um, because they've poisoned themselves deliberately or accidentally, mm -hmm. another thing that they will do is like pump enormous amounts of charcoal. charcoal into that's what there. they'll often do with dogs or cats yeah. if they've eaten something toxic depends yeah. on what they've eaten but that's what they'll often do yeah and in those in those areas it's Same incredibly reason. effective um and that sort of lets you in on the immediate problem i guess because when you start to think about that you realize that it's like it's indiscriminately absorptive yes it's there's no way of kind of targeting it for oh this no. is going to take out the nasty stuff it just takes out everything yes. kind of so anyway um there are by the way a million different uses for activated charcoal. You the main can... one I use it for in my home is I've got a fish tank. So activated yeah. charcoal in the filter at the start and then at the end, when the water's all nice and clean, having gone through activated charcoal, we've got these little thing called bionews which hold on to good bacteria. So as the water goes through, it gets its, it gets its good bacteria to go back into the tank because yeah. it ta the activated charcoal gets rid of everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so there's, there's that kind of purpose. There are various cleaning purposes. Various you can make your own purposes. toothpaste with it. You can make face packs with it. You can do all sorts of stuff. Yes. It is. So I probably wouldn't use it for cleaning my floors. I like my floors. I don't want to accidentally make them black in the grouchings and things. Well, like when I was cooking with it, I was surprised by how easy it was to clean up afterwards. Okay, cool. So again, if you, if you just take those absorbent properties as a kind of, this is going to leach up yeah. whatever's down there, actually getting it off stuff is is actually fairly, yeah, yeah, really quite easy. Yeah, that's incredibly logical of you, Misha. Oh, Who knew? What can I say? Who what knew? What can I say? So, uh, how did you first put that into your diet? So most of most of what I ingested, I just found it easiest to put like a uh, half a teaspoonful into a glass of water, mm -hmm. stir up and just drink. Mm -hmm. And I figured that'll get it into my digestive system yep. as quickly as anything else. Um, then at around about the same time, I thought, well, maybe I can buy some sort of professionally created products just to see what this is like. It's in a lot of breads and stuff. I yes, think. it is in a lot of breads, but they tend to be, it's like specialty bakeries, couldn't find any in Melbourne. Oh. 
one in Sydney, um, but I didn't want a loaf of bread delivered from Sydney because, you know... Um, I'm not 100% guaranteed. It's there's, a limit to how, yeah. there's a limit to how bougie you want to be as well. It's like, I'll have, <laughs> my, I'll have I my... I have no limit on my bougie-ness, Misha. I'll None. have my artisanal activated charcoal sourdough <laughs> <laughs> delivered. I reckon if you went to so, certain markets, you could probably quite, find it. Quite possibly. But then what I found is also the kind of products that are made um, that people are selling, like the expense is just obscene. Mm-hmm. My favourite was a packet, a 110 gram packet of water crackers with activated charcoal in them were like $6.80. 110 grams is not, it's not very much. That's not very much at all. That's minuscule. That's like one cheese board's worth probably of water crackers. Depends on who's eating the cheese. <laughs> If it's me, it's like maybe one cheese board, <laughs> max. <laughs> so like that kind of expense is crazy. Even when you're buying just, even activated charcoal biscuits for dogs are pretty pricey. They're not, at, most of the time they're not activated charcoal, they're just charcoal. Yeah. These just to let you were. know, there's actually often a difference. Yeah. Oh no, I'm sure. Well, it's the charcoal isn't exposed to steam. It isn't magicified into it. Its- Magic! It's also that what they're giving charcoal for for dogs is usually to, you don't need activated charcoal for it. Mm. Basically, you're just trying to absorb any mouse sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Probably because the dog has rotting teeth. Continue on. Yeah. So, um, I just bought the powdered form. Yep. So, powdered activated charcoal. Even that, I have to say, is not cheap. I think this was like 220 gram tub and yep. it was 26 or $27. Yeah, right. That was about as cheap as I found. There are some companies... How that, long did that last you? Oh, it's still going. It's still going, okay. It's still going. Um, very much still going. I don't know when we're going to get through it. Like, Fee occasionally uses pre-made face packs, like cosmetic company created face packs with activated charcoal in them. I'm sure she's going to keep on using it. I think if you put that with some honey and a little bit of water or mm. some cacao powder... Yeah. Brilliant face mask, I think, my friend. It was yeah, a brilliant yeah. mud mask, and I'm suggesting she does that. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Or quite What, I, that, <laughs> what I would say about that is do not allow anyone to take a photo of you and post it on social media because it will look like you're in blackface. Yes. There it are really there will. are charcoal masks that you peel off that are quite yeah, yeah. big on Facebook and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, For that reason. I'm sure. But anyway, just a note of caution. Yeah. Um, if you don't want to be thought of as... We frown know, upon blackface is what Mitch is trying to say. That's true. We yes. do generally speaking. So, so yeah, just had it in water at first. Again, like one of these things, I, c- I couldn't taste a thing. Yeah, okay. To be honest. That's nice. Could not taste a thing. Then <coughs> I made a really, really simple, no-need ciabatta bread mm-hmm. with it. So what I did was basically I used around about a tablespoonful of activated charcoal. It's probably yeah. slightly on the high side in terms yeah. of amount, but I just wanted to see... I was really interested in what's it going to do for the texture, what's it going to do for taste, what's it going to do for anything else. It shouldn't kill the yeast, though. No, it didn't. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. didn't. Um, it was a cold day, bread rose, just fine. What? Did you put much salt in it? Um, none, I, wonder if it, I don't think. What? Why is there not any salt in bread? Anyway, that's beside don't. the point. Because I have butter with salt in it, so... Anyway... Um, <laughs> I was just wondering if it would absorb, like if that changes, if it would absorb oh, salt so that it doesn't take that taste of salt. Thought. That's why I was asking. That is a th- that's really interesting. Well, we'll I will not know until next time. <laughs> um, so just from a strategic point of view, when you're making bread that is coal black, mm. you have to be so attentive to the baking process to figure out whether you've burnt it or not. I mean, yes. Like if you're baking a chocolate sweet dough, again, harder to tell. Yeah. Um, but that's when you just sit there like a crazy person or like somebody on The Great British Bake Off, <laughs> my favourite show in the world, and just sit there staring at the oven for 45 minutes. Yeah, but I didn't, I didn't really want to do that. What? Anyway, what so you, I just... Sorry, I, do you have a life or I something? Just, <laughs> I just kept on coming back to the oven over and over again and getting more and more irritated. Again, what, like, expecting it to have browned? <laughs> <laughs> what were you expecting? No, just, you know, very quickly opening the oven and tapping with a spoon to figure out what the crust was like to get a sense of... Put steam in the oven? Now we're getting into baking stuff, which is... Yeah, I, I didn't... I, no, I, I didn't do anything. Okay. I made the most basic loaf possible. Um, okay. No, so no steaming, no tea towel over the glass, no, none of that crazy kind mm-hmm, of stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, no real proofing time, didn't... You know, this is honestly like... I'm, I'm, listeners, I'm currently judging his bread-making ability. I know. In case this, anybody was wondering. This was the quickest, dirtiest, no-need ciabatta you've... Had. This is honestly the, the poor... Well, it, was, it literally looked dirty because it was black. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So then it comes out. 
And it's just a perfectly ordinary, unsurprising, loaf of unspectacular bread. loaf of bread, which just happens to look like a cow pat of one of Satan's herd, you know? I mean, but it would look nice with a nice yellow, yellow creamy butter on it. Yeah, kind of. Bit of, of a sprinkling of Kind of. I, I have to say, like, I guess if you want... It's artistic. I don't know, it's Instagrammable. Yeah, I don't know why you would want a conversation starter bread as part of your dinner party, but that's... An easy way of doing it. Some people I guess. just don't have much conversation game, Misha. <laughs> Quite possibly. Quite possibly. But again, like texture, or totally ordinary bread. Taste, totally ordinary, unspectacular, faintly boring bread. Poop. Poop. Ordinary. Not at all black. No, not noticeably. <laughs> Listen, I'm so disappointed. I know, but I didn't, like, here's the thing. Didn't eat tons and tons of it mm-hmm. i have to say but didn't no- didn't notice anything from a digestive point of view from drinking teaspoons of it in now water now i'm going to get or... into a little bit of the poop scoop so yep. if you if listeners don't want to know about consistency skip ahead a little yep. bit right now did it change i imagine it would have made the output firmer not that i noticed okay I, like my diet is quite dull and unvarying. It doesn't surprise me. In a lot of senses. Yeah. <laughs> um, so things, and this is a similar kind of thing with like peeing clear relatively early in the morning. Like I've got pretty consistent habits when it comes to eating. The fee and I only eat like kangaroo and fish is the only sort of animal sources of protein yep. that we eat. So that's really, really consistent. The quality of the meat tends to be pretty consistent over time, the even though it's game. The and content's all fairly consistent. Exactly. Okay. So it would really have surprised me had anything like that happened, and it simply didn't. It still surprises me a little bit that it didn't firm it up at all, because if it's meant to be absorbing stuff, I don't know, I would expect that to firm it up a little bit. But again, I wonder with... Because drinking water-wise, at least... 2.4 litres per day minimum. Were you drinking the charcoal at the same time you were having the meal? Or like just afterwards? This was like first thing in the morning. Okay. Do this now, otherwise I'm going to forget to do it at some later point during yep. the day. So we, when taking fish oil, when taking the other stuff that I take in the morning, it was just like, eh, take this as though it's medicine. Because maybe there's less in there for it to absorb at that time of day. Quite, yep. I don't that's, know. That's definitely possible. I am the kind of person who wakes up and drinks water during the night. So do I, yeah. Though? Yes. Yeah. I so once woken up because I drank water in the night and then I just left my bottle on my bed open and uh, was like, I wake up and I was like, why, why is my bed wet? Am I wet? Merlin. What is going on? Nope, turns out I'm an idiot. Yeah. Anyway, I didn't mean to I say yeah in a in sort of agreement way. No, 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 that's okay. So I that's understand. the that's the personal experience. Now for my favourite part of this. Mm. The science. <laughs> so I mentioned <laughs> I, I, th- I think that was in abbreviated um, commas. There, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, not actually. This is very okay. good. Good science is, is coming up, I think, anyway. I, I really enjoyed reading this particular article. So as, we've talk- as we talked about earlier, it's indiscriminate in terms of what it absorbs. Yeah. So while, yes, it may possibly have a detoxifying effect on you, it will also have the effect of sucking particularly micro, not so much macro nutrients out of the food mm-hmm. that you've eaten as it's moving through your digestive system. Like your amino acid type thing? Um, so things like, um, think of like vitamins and minerals kind of micronutrients. And the reason that that's known... Your manganese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I those, like manganese those well. sorts of things. The reason that's known is a beautiful study done by... I wish I could, I can't possibly pronounce their names, so I didn't even bother writing them down, but at a Turkish university Mm. who did the following experiment. They took apple juice, which they made and cold-pressed themselves, and I know they made and cold-pressed it because part of their research report findings is a step-by-step, beautifully detailed description of where they got the apples from, what kind of knives they cut the apples up with, What kind of apples they were, I imagine. What variety. the brand and manufacturer of the hydraulic (laughs) press with which they pressed the apple juice. Super detailed, I love it. The exact pasteurisation that they put the apple juice through. Mm -hmm. The time it spent in a centrifuge to make sure that it was just absolutely the same consistency all the way through. You feel like the nerdery got a bit out of control on this one. They were so good. It was just, (laughs) it was beautiful. And so then the the basic experiment they had was they had litres and litres then of this apple juice. Mm -hmm. 
and they put increasing some, quantities. Some for experiments, some for cider later on. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> um, so then they put increasing quantities of both powdered and granular charcoal in yep. these. So it started off uh, half a gram per litre all the way up to, I think, five grams per mm-hmm. litre. And then they tested naturally pre- and post-exposure to charcoal, mm-hmm. the vitamin and mineral content of the apple juice. And they found that even with really small amounts of charcoal, the vitamin and mineral quality of the apple juice was diminished afterwards. Yep. And with huge amounts of charcoal, like it's crazy decimated. diminished. And also, um, the colour of the apple juice was substantially changed. So this experiment was done in 2003. The study was published in 2007. The reason they were doing the study is not because of fancy pants, modern activated charcoal obsession, but simply can this be used in food processing as a purifying agent, yes. as a do we want to leach some colour out of something? Or and even to, you know, because you use charcoal tabs when you're hiking or whatever to purify water, mm. could you take that and then change the usage of it in a commercial yeah. setting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're, you know, they're trying to sort of figure out very much that kind of commercial area and they end this research report, my reading of it anyway, was saying, yeah, maybe not because... Because it takes out too much. Yeah, you're leaching out. I have one problem with this mission. Yeah. That is not the same d- conditions as in your gut. So your no. acidity level in your gut and everything no, is quite, quite different. Yeah, yeah. And I imagine that changes a little bit. Not entirely, but I yeah. imagine that does change a little bit how much things are getting taken or or not taken out of the body I'm, by the charcoal. I'm absolutely sure. But I think the takeaway you would still want is that indiscriminate nature of yep. it's soaking up. And I think that it probably can't be said too much in this day and age with detox being such a, you know, detox this, yeah, fruit yeah. detox that, yep. cleanse this and the other. It's really worth Eat saying. bananas for a week. Suddenly you're super healthy. Yeah. If you're super concerned about toxins in your environment and your diet, the thing to do is change your diet and environment. Yes. You you can't go I'm fixing sorry, things. I'm sorry, Misha. Are you telling me I can't solve my entire life problems with a quick fix? I don't believe I'm you. I'm sorry. We're going to wake up being stabbed to death by Gwyneth Paltrow, I'm it's sure. Obscene. <laughs> obscene. I can't believe this suggestion. What I, I mean, I, I have to say, again, I this is a couple of weeks' experience with it. I was not taking huge amounts of it. I didn't notice myself, for example, feelings of being hungrier, Yep. less energetic or anything yep. like that. I very much doubt that it's leaching nutrients out of your digestive tract to the point where... You, you're going to develop scurvy. No, you know, I, you're very unlikely to feel any sort of really bad effects from it. But I'm also sort of hugely sceptical that it's going to do what most people are hoping... It's going to do, ...that yeah. it's going to do. Which is basically, I think, take away <coughs> all the fats and shit from the fish and chips you had last night. Yeah, that's that Before would be the kind of the hope. Gym. Or, you know, man, it was one too many martinis and I'll just... Who wants to take away that, Michelle? Activated charcoal biscuit and, you know, I'll be, I'll be raring to go the next day. So probably not going to work in that way. I will say, like, again, just coming back to the kind of I don't, conversation starter food thing, it does look, like, it looks really striking. Yeah. There's no question. Like, like squid ink risotto or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's different. That's right. Absolutely. I don't know if it's, a, if it's appetizing... But it's different. Yeah, yeah. And I have to say, like, easy to cook with, easy to clean up after. I was really, like, I was looking at because I put quite a bit of olive oil in ciabatta as well mm-hmm. when I'm making well, it. it. Quite. Um, but, like, quite a lot. I think, like, almost as much as, as water to See, create. actually almost as much as flour. And I'm no. like, well, that is quite a lot. <laughs> um, so as I was sort of mixing it up, I was thinking, holy shit, you know, it's these black streaks are forming on the red m- mixing bowl. And I was going, oh, God, this is going to be dreadful. But I'm going to get just, in trouble from the wife when she yeah. gets home. <laughs> yeah. I've just, ruined the red mixer. Just rinsed straight off and no, no particular issues whatsoever. I would imagine that people who were into making their own kind of crackers, like making their own mm-hmm, biscuits again, mm-hmm. that would be a pretty striking looking thing striking to create. Striking signature bake for all of you Bake Off fans out there. There's another little reference. That's right, yeah. And what else? Oh, I loved my favourite part about the packaging of the activated charcoal itself was... This may or may not. It's got three instructions. One is for um, cosmetic use, as mm-hmm. in make into mud pack or whatever. Yep. One is for brushing teeth. Mm-hmm. And then one is just internal use. And the cosmetic one's got this, you know, mix with anything that you normally mix with, blah, it's blah, blah. Fine. Apply externally, Daisies, blah, blah, blah. Whatever flowers. you want to do. 
for Double brushing rainbows. teeth, it was a similar kind of thing, you know, yep. mixed with whatever used to brush teeth as normal. Internal use just said, consult a medical professional. <laughs> stuff, <laughs> Which I thought was quite a nice touch. <laughs> we absolve all responsibility when it's going into your body. You fool, you fool, it's black. Why? That's, that's exactly that should tell right. you not to put it in your body. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like if anyone's ever had the experience of being able to hunt down raw, unpasteurized milk. Yeah. Which they have to sell as a cosmetic product. As a bath milk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because it can kill you. Yes, <laughs> if, you're a, if you're a small person, yeah, in or particular. Or if... But I mean, it's so much less likely. If your microbiome doesn't work yeah. very well or yeah, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, so... Or if it's particularly old. Yeah. If it's not super fresh, then you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So... There was our tiny little pinprick at the issue of detoxifying and, you know, I do wish people didn't think of it in that way. But again, I have to say, like, it seems to be relatively harmless. Pity it's so expensive. Pity as with so many of these things, it's like the activated charcoal you get is coconut husks, of course, because if it's not coconut, it's not, <laughs> it's not a superfood. I mean, yeah. Jesus Christ. Obviously, it, you know, shouldn't matter. Um, shouldn't matter particularly what it is. It's, it's insanely it's overpriced been, for what it is. It's been burnt down to charcoal. It literally has nothing left of what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Why yeah. does it even matter what it's it was? Just, it's mental. <laughs> Unless so they it was can, dog poo, probably not important. Yeah, yeah, so they can slap the extra price on it, oh, presumably. Goodness. And there really are. I mean, the there are places who are selling like 100 gram packets of it for $17, $18. Like yeah. obscene that is prices. Obscene prices for, you know, burnt material. So anyway, you know, probably harmless, very, very useful if you've been poisoned and doctors are pumping enormous amounts of it into your stomach, mm -hmm. good on it from that point of view. But, you know, let's try and get a little bit more real about what a detox actually is. Inside of I have been not keen on meditation the last couple of, like, last three months. I've just been a bit, like, I've been making myself do it a couple of times a week because I know it's good for me, yeah. but I've been, like, finding reasons not to do it. Oh, I'm just going to go to bed early instead of meditating or whatever. I've just not really been into it. Um, and I've been listening to, I was introduced via another Harry Potter podcast because I like Harry Potter. I've got problems with Fantastic Beasts, but I love Harry Potter. Um, it's true. Don't you laugh at me? I, I'm a proper fangirl. Anyway, so I was introduced to this podcast called Harry Potter and the Sacred Text, where they go through the books from chapter one to the end of chapter seven, sort of thing. Uh -huh. And week by week, they, look, they take a theme and they look at that chapter through that theme. So it's fear or friendship or trust or loss or anger or abandonment or whatever word they happen to get and often they're quite positive sometimes they're negative whatever they yeah, have a nice yeah. balance yeah. and it's these two hosts one is a the female is a humanist preacher the male i think he once had something to do with religion but now doesn't i'm not really quite sure um and so they use traditional techniques that you use with the bible or the quran or whatever to you know with the parables and stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. so you dive into them so they look at that chapter through that prism using those techniques and it's actually really interesting it brings out a lot of stuff within the book that you didn't really think about mm. and it's quite relatable because i don't really believe in i wouldn't say i'm atheist but i would definitely say i'm in the agnostic category at the very uh -huh. least i think yeah so you know, it, it's it's slightly spiritual, but not that spiritual. It's more relatable sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what it's actually, what I found is that I'm listening to an episode every night at about five, and then afterwards I'll sit and I will actually meditate on whatever that word is that they were talking about that day. Oh. So I may not actually be meditating about Harry Potter or anything. Yeah. But it will then make me look at my life and how that word has impacted my life and how yeah. I want to take charge or take control of that word moving forward with my life uh -huh. in a meditative kind of way. And I've been really enjoying it. Wow. Yeah. So it's brought me back to meditation, which is quite nice. They use huh. a couple of different techniques. They're all, 
So they start off with like a recap of the, of the chapter and yep. then they look at, they bring up a couple of points to do with that particular theme of that week that they see in that particular chapter. Yeah. And then they delve into the chapter using one or another, a couple of different techniques um, that are all religious-based techniques. Yeah. Um, and then they, they're all really short. They're like 20, the longest is like 40 minutes or 45 minutes. Right. The shortest are about 20 minutes. So nice and short, easy to digest, and then just can get you thinking about the role, you know, leadership has in your life. Yep. Or has had in your life. And that's yep. really been really engaging for me. I've been really enjoying it. And it's brought a new dimension to the meditations I've been doing because it's... I, did, I went through a phase of doing a lot of those kind of imaginary meditations, which can be really nice. I think that's why I dropped out of it, though, a little bit, because yeah, I just yeah. kind of was like, okay, yeah, I'm done now. Yeah. I do have an imagination. I know this. I've moved yeah. on with my life a little bit. This is not bringing anything new to me. Yeah. And just sitting there staring at a candle flame also doesn't necessarily bring anything new to me. But I found no. that having given me a theme or given me a word to think or to ruminate on has actually brought something new to me. Huh. And I've been really enjoying it. That's really interesting. So how long have these have, have this humanist preacher and, and reformed whatever he is been making this podcast? I don't know. A um, couple of years. So I think they're in their fourth... I think it might be halfway through the fourth book or something. Yeah. I'm still only in the first book because yeah. I've only been doing one a night. I haven't been doing on, on, almost at the end. I think I might have just finished the first book. Yeah. Um, so they've been doing it for a good few years. Mm. Fascinating. And I think they're doing it... Because they actually had a reading group. The reason I think they're doing it is because they met, I think, at a reading group for a different book. And the humanist preacher, or whatever you call a humanist preacher. Don't know. I don't know the right term for that. Anyway, the lady. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, she, I think it was a Jane Eyre, like, meeting at a university or whatever. Jesus don't you give Christ. me that. Jane Eyre is fantastic. Jesus Christ. I'm going to take you to task over my 19th century Dear romantic reader. literature. Shut up. Um, <laughs> I battle hard, guys. I battle hard for my things. Um, and they were at this, just discussing a reading group on, and that, just discussing Jane Eyre. Yeah. And then at the end, I think the guy, Caspar, said something along the lines of, wouldn't this be great if it was something like Harry Potter where we all can really relate to it because mm. it's set in a modern time and we don't really do that sort of in-depth really analysing with modern literature. We tend no. to do it with older literature or True. religious texts. And we certainly, don't, we certainly don't tend to do it with literature that's considered to be young adult or childish. Yep. Or, and so there is a kind of, there's an enormous snobbery around, like one shouldn't take... Um, a product seriously when it's had such a vast reach and, and yeah. Harry Potter is just the outlier of all outliers in terms of universal appeal at a certain point anyway. And I've always enjoyed the books and I think they're a really nice look at, you know, how you become a person and where you choose what what you're going to fight for in your life because it mm. the whole thing of it is about prejudice and about all yep. that sort of stuff. Yep. And... So I think that's a really great moral message of yeah. the whole seven books. But yeah. I don't think that sort of moral message is peppered through every single chapter, to be no. honest. But what they're looking at is... So they looked at one that was um, white privilege was one of the things that they've discussed. And I was like, that I would never have applied white privilege to Harry Potter. But it was a really nice then thing to think about how has white privilege affected me? How am I going to take that knowledge moving forward in my life? All that yeah. sort of stuff. It's, yeah, it's just been bringing up a new topic to be really interested in. And some of the ways they've looked at, you know, they've changed the way I think about the characters of the Dursleys and those evil kind of characters that they've got in there because they're looking at it from a different point of view, which is nice. Yeah. Because it can make you look at people in your life from a different point of view. Yes. That's really, really fascinating. I'm particularly fascinated by the fact that you took that not as a kind of disposable bit of a podcast listen but into let's turn that then into a kind of meditation practice afterwards that's really interesting I think I didn't mean to it just kind of happened because yeah. they do take it incredibly seriously like, like there's a bit of you know la, 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 but it's a, they're serious about it mm. they're like you know and at the end they do a blessing so both of them do a blessing for not for each other or anything they just go I really want to bless 
um, Hermione because she keeps getting ignored in class when she's putting her hands up. And for all those girls out there that fucking get looked over all the goddamn time, you know, I just want to bless you. They're just reiterating whatever it is that they've gotcha. made a point of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, Not yeah. actually, oh, I, see. I, I, see. I give you the power of Christ, <laughs> which is looking really uncomfortable for everyone out there. Um, and I, I think that because that takes it from inside the podcast to outside, Yes. That's kind of where that led that me was to the outside. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I keep thinking about it and I was like, well, why don't I sit down and dive into that thought? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what's the, what's the podcast called again? Harry Potter and the Sacred Text. Harry Potter and the Sacred Text. I'm going to have to have a look at this. And it's free on iTunes and everywhere else you readily get them. Yep. Podcasts, those things, and now that the one given, that we're doing. Now that we've given you a plug, Harry Potter and the Sacred <laughs> Text. Um, Weird. Quo it is really nice. Pro. That's all I will say. <laughs> it's nice and short and digestible. And yeah, so are we. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'm not that digestible. Anyway, um, it is. So the one of the people is American. The woman's American. The man, ho, the male host, is um, British origin, though he lives in America. And it's nice to have those slight differing. Mm. Um, ways that they were raised because yeah, that changes yeah. your approach to things yep, as well. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Nice to have a woman. And she's also quite a hardcore feminist, so I'm always like, yeah. 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 yeah having moments. Good <laughs> So I am going to review a pillow, and mm-hmm. while this may seem like a slightly odd thing to review on a health and wellness podcast... I mean, it really does. Yeah. The reason I'm going to review it is simply because of how much weller I felt um, having only used it for a couple of nights. It's made by a company called Ecosa. Um, they also make mattresses and bamboo bedding. They make mattress in a box. I think They're so. They're one of the companies that do mattresses yeah, yeah, in a box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All which these I've been companies. skeptical about from the start because boxes are not comfortable to lie on for a very <laughs> from, the, from the very first beginning. That's so true. That is extremely so true. So how this... Look, all I'm saying is for this pillow to have made massive difference to you, I imagine it either cuddles or spoons you and or sings some sort of nice lullaby to you to help you get to sleep. <sighs> if only that were true. No, it's, it doesn't do that whatsoever. It is, however, it's, it's on the top of it, it's got this kind of concave shape, so it supports your mm-hmm. neck um, and head. It's made out of that memory foam stuff, which is this kind of nice balance between firm and a little bit squishy. Yep. So it'll let you oh, sink into it a certain amount. But, but then it still it's, gives it's you a healthy firm. amount of support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly right. You missed yeah. the hand movement. <laughs> yeah, Dom was Dom got the slightly obscene hand movement in very early today. Um, <laughs> but start high. <laughs> That's right. Um, you may well have seen ads for this particular company. Um, they're the ones you might see on Instagram or Facebook mm-hmm. where an unfeasibly attractive couple are balancing an unfeasible number of wine glasses on a mm-hmm. mattress and then jumping up and down on it. And then jumping it. up and down on it. And the, the wine glasses don't fall over. So anyway, that's the company. What they don't show you is apparently with those sort of beds, if you sit on the side of them to say, do up your shoelace, you go whoop and just go sliding off because oh, really? they're, they're, cause they're not spring. It's not the same. Uh, yeah, so you can bounce around that. all you want in the middle, which is great for a couple bouncing in the middle. But if you're just sitting, if you're a single person on the side of your bed, sitting on your own, you go <laughs> and fly away. Okay, um, I can't. I can't Sorry. actually that speak to that. Was a slight deviation. <laughs> was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, a little bit of a tangent, but that's okay. We can we can drag this back. <laughs> um, anyway, the, all the good news is. Um, oh, okay, and a couple of other really handy things about it. It comes with two extra little foam inserts. So if the pillow's not high enough you for you, high, you can, you can put extra inserts into your pillowcase to yep. give it a bit of added height. It took me a little bit of fiddling to find, you know, a few nights in a row before I found what I think is a really good Did you get level. to squish it in person before you ordered it online? I didn't, know. So this is the thing. It's um, a bit of a leap of faith with a pillow because well, it's such a personal thing. Well, it's, it was a, a leap of a gift as it was because mm. Fee... Fee um, decided to get herself one, um, having done a little bit of research on them. And then, you know, very sweetly um, bought one for me as well. I think partially out of kind of, oh crap, I just bought myself a pillow and I didn't 
buy my husband a pillow. Possibly, anyway. Um, Possibly. So, yeah, Maybe I mean... it was cheaper to get two at once. That's, the delivery. That's also a possibility. She kind of sort of semi-fessed up to, I just realised I didn't buy you one, so I thought I'd buy you one. I was thinking only about my own comfort. Yeah. And I realised that, <laughs> you know, I did, at some sort of ceremony thing, I did say that I was going to do thinking about your comfort occasionally. We didn't, we didn't have that in the vows, thank God. Um, um, so, yeah, um, I now have, for the last four or so months, I've had a job where I sit down heaps yep. and heaps, and yep. that I've found has had... I'm not dealing with back pain or anything like that, but I know that I have to foam roll more. You're of an collapsing evening. through your lower rib cage. Yes, more. absolutely. Yep. So it takes a little while for my spine to get untangled of a night. Um, I was noticing like my neck is crackier and creakier. I love a bit of a crack in the neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's very satisfying. But I feel so much better having slept on this pillow. Decent pillow. Overnight. Now, there are ways of kind of improvising a pillow shape that's similar. You can just like roll up a towel and put yes. it in the pillowcase, which I gather is, is absolutely fine as well. This one just happens to, to come with that particular shape. And I realised, like I was trying to think, when was the last time I replaced my pillow and I've got a vague feeling I might have been sleeping on the same pillow for like seven or eight years oh my god that's such a germ burden but um, well it's, no. it gets washed yeah no the actual pillow how often are you washing that you're washing that yeah, every couple well, of weeks occasionally not every occasionally couple of weeks. that's disgusting how much <laughs> dead dead like <laughs> bits of skin bits of drool that's just like made its way in there adds talk to about the a microbiome my god <laughs> Just you meant to change your pillow every couple of years. Okay, well, I had completely missed that memory. Um, <laughs> no one told you that and they're giving you the adult how to adult brochure, did no, they? Okay. I never got the how to adult brochure. Oh, I explained so much. That's something I absolutely <laughs> missed out on. Um, so, yeah, so it's, it's been obviously way longer than it ought to have been. Um, but I've noticed, a, as I said, noticed a massive change in terms of, I think, Maybe not sleep quality generally, but certainly um, quality of neck movement and back movement in the morning after. You're nice. putting your hand up as though you have a question. Yes, because I've been well trained in a Catholic <laughs> school to do that. Um, I would really worry that that sort of memory foam would cause a lot of heat because I, I get oh. night sweats, right? So everything in my bed is designed to try and lessen the night sweat right. issue. And... I, I've been told that those sort of memory foams, latexes and those sort of things as well, all increase the heat exponentially. I haven't noticed you, it so far. Have you been so getting far? a bit sweaty in the bed? Don't believe so. No. Um, no, I haven't noticed it <laughs> so far. let that go straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. I did. <laughs> I, was, I was vaguely tempted to make the sort of obligatory remark about no dom no, and no. married, but eh, it's a bit cheap, um, as we can see yeah. from the brittle silence. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, have, I haven't actually noticed that in any way, shape or form. The, I know the website, which I was looking at briefly this morning, although I could not remember the product's name, um, I know the website talks a lot about cooling properties and ventilation okay. and various other things, so maybe they're aware of that. I mean, bamboo is meant to be cooling, but if that's just the outside, not the interior, I don't know how cooling that would be. But yeah. it certainly is worth looking into. Yeah. I'm always on the hunt for something to make my bed life better. Mm. And I actually mean my sleeping life in this case. <laughs> Let's be utterly clear about that. Yeah, so I think the... How the much? Yes, that's the bad news. <laughs> that's, that definitely All is goes, great, and then we're going to yeah. kick you when you're down. That goes into the bad news column. So $120. That's a lot for a pillow. Which is pretty pricey for a pillow. I have I mean, to tell I, I've you... I've spent about 60 bucks on a pillow yeah. previously. But I have to tell you, had it been me, I would have been I would have been balking at the at the checkout section of the website. I don't think I would have gone for that. Certainly mm -hmm, not. Mm -hmm. Certainly not sight unseen. Having actually used it though, like if I knew what it was like, there's that they have that. This is a repurchase. You're like it's expensive, but I would 100 percent do it again. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I think it goes into that category. Um, unless something hideous happens, but assuming it stays the same, like it has the same impact on my sleep over time in yeah. the future, I think it's definitely worth it. Although you think that the the most impact would be the first couple of weeks, definitely, because you're or kind when of you'd writing it. the way you you slept yeah. a little bit. Yeah, and that's that's when you're obviously going to notice the difference in terms of just sensation and everything else. I don't think, like, it's not some miracle device. It's not as if I go to sleep faster. It's not as if I feel like I sleep deeper. I'm talking mostly in terms of just neck comfort and how my spine feels in yes. the morning. Those are definitely far and away better. They have do have one of those things where it's like the 100-day trial send back for free and no, not that anyone ever, does that. ever yep. fucking does that. But 
it's a nice to get you over the line at the hundred and twenty dollar in the checkout and then the you know yeah. whatever shipping. And in theory, like it's, it's to get you over the line. People yeah, yeah. don't and usually it, use that. And again, like I guess in theory, like maybe with a hundred and twenty dollar purchase, if I'd actually done that in some moment Alternate of craziness, yeah. yeah, I may have been tempted to sort of think, well, actually, if this is kind of crap, then you know, I I think I want that money back. I mean, I Thank would, you so much. I would, but that's because I'm povo, but. I'm one of those annoying people that actually sends stuff back from ASOS. People never do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, but most they their business model kind of relies on people not doing that. Mm, no, quite. That's all right. I think everybody's business it's there model in relies case on you... people not asking for refunds. Yeah. It's there in case you need it, but that's a pretty good solid recommendation. Yeah, yeah. So an Australian company, as far as I know, they've got pretty good environmental credentials. In terms of the the sheets they sell are all um, that bamboo yep. fabric, which, which happens to be really nice, by the way. It is really nice. I've actually got not that brand, but a bamboo sheet on um, fitted sheet on my bed. Mm. They don't wash that well. They get really crumply post wash. Look, minor oh. adult problem. Mm. Probably not something that you're going to be that worried about, nor most people, because mm. really, once it's on the bed, it kind of flattens it and straightens it out. Anyway. That's it. That's what I was going to say. And who do you like? You're not going to iron. Case, I, I don't own an iron, so I'm definitely not going to iron a pillowcase. Yeah, That's 100% certain, Misha. All right, so Misha, I've got some friends that are utterly crazy and they do an apple cider vinegar, obviously raw with the mother, blah, 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 yeah, yeah. Um, shot every single morning and they mm -hmm. claim that it basically, I think, turns them into some form of Jesus. So that's yep. what I would like you to do. Apple cider shot, apple cider vinegar shot, not oh, the apple cider, <laughs> try and stay away from the cider, just to go for the vinegar. Um, every single morning when you wake up first thing. That sounds great. I will do exactly that. Delightful. I, I follow it with some sort of delightfully sweet or coffee-like chaser. Yeah, 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 definitely. I'd have that shit Just set up, ready to go. <laughs> teaspoonful of molasses or something like mm. that. And as Homegranate for molasses, you... the king of all molasses. <laughs> Molassi, whatever. And as for you, young Dom, mm -hmm. I think I shall send you off to investigate the world of probiotics. Oh, I like living creatures, so this might be fun. All right. We'll see you next time, guys. We will. Thank you, dear listener, for, well, for, for listening. A few words in these litigious times before I tell you how you can get in touch. Anything short of a coffee enema is not intended to be and should not be used as a substitute for advice from medical and psychological professionals. If you want to get in touch with us, and we would love to hear from you, you can email us at anythingshortpod at gmail.com. We gratefully accept suggestions for future challenges and books and other products to review. Or you can heap upon us criticism and abuse if you wish to heap abuse but find yourself short on time, we recommend Twitter and Instagram, where we go by at short of a pod. If you like what you've heard, on the other hand, leave us a rating and a review on iTunes. Tweet about us, or like the common cold or herpes simplex, spread us by using your mouth.